Ladies and gentlemen, it couldn't be a better time to record this new episode of Talks on Acting. After a while, we're recording a brand new episode with one of my most favorite human beings, such an inspirational, classy woman that has made so many different things in her life with great success and is continuing to do so and will hopefully in the future have even more success than she's enjoying right now, fearfully. So one of those persons I love to take as an example of how much we can build and fortify ourselves by studying, by self-teaching ourselves all the instruments necessary to overcome adversities and really become outstanding in whatever business we are moving in. So welcome everybody, the astonishing Mariela Garriga. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What an introduction. It's absolutely my pleasure. I wanted to do this for a long time with you because, I mean, we can we can tell people our relationship that is now like a friendship uh, has started as, as working together on self-tapes. It's quite a while now we started our first uh, yeah. venture and, and from there on it kind of evolved into what we're enjoying right now which is beautiful you're you're such a gracious human being I'm so privileged and honored to be one of of your friends and also to be a witness to your continuation of work in so many different occasions we've worked together we shot a lot of self-tapes during the night <laughs> yeah <laughs> crazy you're like... sometimes how are you today how you feel well, yeah well I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing good. I'm in Italy right now. Um, although, you know, I live in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, talking about this and about how we met, I remember now the first time we met in Rome in your apartment that I had a cell tape last minute with a new agent and he right. told me, you like need that. it for tomorrow. I didn't know anyone in Rome and he was, okay, this guy is great. He's a great coach. Just go with him. I didn't know you at all. And then... Right. It was like uh, love yeah. at first sight, like, yeah. like <laughs> for uh, coaching and everything. And, and you, it was like quite a discovery. In fact, yeah. then every time I come to Italy, I just uh, work with you. And then also from LA, I just yeah. work with a video, video self tape with you because it's, it's amazing, your technique and everything you do. Thank you. I mean, yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy how we got thrown in there, catapulted in there in this let's do something for tomorrow we need it always pressure always on time is one of those classic examples it's, it's always like that right it's it needs to be done by yesterday <laughs> it needs to be done very fast you have a lot of pressure talking about self-tapes and you you have to be good you have to be outstanding you want to you know you have a reputation to defend that's why i like the self-tape situation so much because there you can see who really you know withstands the pressure there you see who's really able to kind of improvise evolve and change record something in a very narrow window of time to have the opportunity to to get the role right to get hired yeah and you understand how i work with pressure mm -hmm. like all the time we actors have pressure so i think uh, we have to like to be patient and be able to work under pressure to to do things because most of the times we work under pressure Yes. So, um, and that's something that you learned with the years and uh, you taught me a lot about this and how, about how to exercise and do things that take off from your mind. Uh, that pressure, immediate pressure that you have from outside to focus in the character and channel this energy and deliver good acting. I mean, I, I've witnessed you now many times. You, you got an amazing talent and a great charisma, but also you got a real good structured fundament of work your craft it's strong right you can work in many different occasions go very different path and 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 look for many different characters inside of yourself with the with the craftsmanship that you build up for yourself tell us a little bit of how you got to this uh toolbox i was a dancer mm -hmm. before Where? so i used to wake up in cuba mm -hmm. i used to dance in a company from cuba, uh, right? we have to tell people. i'm from cuba yeah, yeah. i'm from cuba <laughs> So I used to uh, dance classic ballet and contemporary, and it was quite a challenge mm -hmm. as a dancer. Uh, in Cuba, I I used to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning and go to uh, in the other side of the city mm -hmm. with no transportation and be there on time because otherwise you lose um, opportunities in the company. And then after having classes in the morning, then we go to rehearsal. And then in the afternoon, since I didn't study this since I was a kid, I studied late in my life. Yeah. I had to go then after my regular classes to a kid's nice. school right. and keep going to be at some point in the same level of the other dancers. Sure. And in that way, I could have more contracts and have more uh, shows in mm. theater. I had this for three years intensive thing. <laughs> 
Um, and I was very young. I was 15. So uh, once I finished that, I think that preparation gave me the work ethic that I have today, especially sometimes when you are you are in these uh, open countries like Italy, like uh, Germany, the United States, you sometimes forget the opportunities that you have and that everything is in the touch of your hands. Right. And then I remind myself once I was in Cuba when I didn't have anything and I had to wake up very early and do very strict schedule and be very dis- disciplined because each thing that I did count every day. Wow, that's pretty tough. And it's pretty demanding. Where did this wish came from to be on stage? Was that something your parents kind of tipped you into or was that something naturally coming from yourself, like the passion of being on stage and, and showing what you got? So it wasn't planned. Everything happened and I'm like, okay, do I go for it or not? (laughs) (laughs) So I was at school and um, I was very shy Mm -hmm. and I wanted to be an archaeologist. I don't know if you know this, but Uh yeah, I wanted to be an archaeologist. And in that time, it's a long story. My mom got sick and I couldn't go to that school. I started to do advertising campaigns to get some money and help my family. And in those times, the director of this company saw me. Mm-hmm. So she uh, she saw something on me that, mm-hmm. I don't know, she was like, I want her for my Oh, company. she saw the obvious, Mariela. She saw just the <laughs> obvious. <laughs> so, but when she told me the first time, like, oh, I have this company, a very famous company in Cuba, I was like, I will never be able to work there. Especially, I'm very shy. And I was like, I only dance in my bedroom. Like, I, I don't even <laughs> dance in parties because I'm very shy. So she was like, okay, just let's give it a try she invited me to the company i fell in love with the, all the dancers the jumps that they did and the turns mm-hmm. and everything and i was like wow i want to experiment this and i did and i it became my passion and i started to do that for my life beautiful and amazing thing and it's also i think one of the fundamental instruments for any great acting performance is to have a deeper understanding and knowledge of your of your body of your movement on how you you can propose yourself what kind of postures uh, you can actually manifest and how you can also enjoy of being in various status positions you know mm-hmm. I, I i think that's such a body language such a fundamental part of of any great actor or actress so and how did the transition to acting actually happen well in italy when mm-hmm. i came here someone again saw me and told me like <laughs> they're getting <laughs> noticed to to work. <laughs> right. so um, I refused uh, so many times to come outside from Cuba because it was my bubble. I was with my family and it's difficult at that time, 2009, like internet wasn't a thing in Cuba. Right. So we didn't know anything like really what was happening outside. We knew, but not that much. Right. So, and I didn't have contact with foreign people. So like what people said about like young girls going outside Cuba, maybe it would be a problem. Maybe, you know, I don't want to say some words here that, <laughs> in your channel but Whoa. people were very afraid to send uh, kids outside so my mom always told me no once once you grow maybe so I always in my in the dancing company I always said no to some opportunities to go outside because I was afraid and because I I didn't want to be out like away from my family but at some point you know the world crisis happened in 2008 2009 right. and it hit Cuba as well Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, let's give it a try. I was already more than 18. And I was like, okay, I think I can think by myself. I said yes to that person, the talent scout. And I, I came here and started to dance in some shows here and modeling and, you know, in the hustling. And then uh, my agent sent me to um, an audition for a movie that they needed, like, just a beautiful girl mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that was able to somehow act Mm -hmm. and since I did a lot of commercials she sent me and it was quite a shock because I never act I did commercials but not speaking especially in a language that is not mine especially at the beginning here now I speak very well Italian but at the beginning it was very difficult so it was kind of like an experience that awake myself you know, I, I wake myself and the casting director really believed in me and in my talent. And he told me that he saw something in me that could see like my career could be very okay. extensive. 
Mm-hmm. If I pursue acting, I still had in my head head doing archaeology yeah. at some point. And so he told me, no, you're crazy. You have to pursue this. At least try. And uh, I give it a try in one class here in Milan with an American coach. For the first time, I experiment really how it was to feel in another person's shoes and to be mm-hmm. on the stage in front of people talking. So the first exercise he made me do was like, just talk about yourself and about Cuba. Mm, interesting. This is a very difficult subject, <laughs> you know, yeah. very, yeah, no one talks about it. Right. Especially if you live in Cuba. It was the first time that I really talked about the situation and about uh, whatever, how I grew up. And the first time that I realized that it was wrong. That was my first role, my role, acting myself, my younger self living in a country like that. And uh, it was quite interesting and I cried in front of people that I didn't know. So at the end of the class, he told me, if you don't want to be an actor, that's okay, but you have to take me as a therapist at least. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, okay, I'm going to think about it. (laughs) And I gave it a try. And and then again, like a ballet, it became my passion and, and I fought for it. And I moved to New York. I did some other classes and the rest is history. And then I met you. Dun, 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 dun. I thought, like, why is she not one of the A-listers already, like in Hollywood? I mean, she she has that perfect luggage. She comes in with all the goods necessary: a great body language, a great voice, like a nice sharp tone, able to transport emotions like immediately and instantly, and also change and switch directions and, and be, you know, act with dignity. I think what also kind of shines through already from your background story, from your history, is what we see you doing as an actress as well. All the roles that you are playing that I had the privilege to witness so far, they had a sense of dignity and taste. And that comes from your, let's say, humble upbringings, difficult upbringings that we all had in, in some ways, in some forms that are that kind of wielded this product together that, that you are now, that kind of forged you out of all the difficulties. And now you have that consistency and that output and that security. I can't even believe that once you were shy. I mean, I'm not saying that you're all over the place all the time, but you seem so secure of your instruments. And with such a humility, you're bringing your talent forward. It kind of amazes me all the time. And I'm I'm saying not because we're recording this right now, because I'm telling you this also every time we're shooting and every every time we're working. And I think that's such an important lesson that we can give maybe to younger aspiring actors, like you are doing with your YouTube channel, Dietro Le Quinte. We're going to talk about that in in, in a second. Like um, that is so inspiring for for younger actors or who just stepping into the game. Like before you think about, you know, big roles and and big achievements and accolades, which of course is cool and, and legitimate to kind of aim for that high ambitions, you know, they forge a long mission. But first of all, the small steps that you're doing in the beginning and how to create that engine that you have, those steps, they have to be clear and sharp and and full of like responsibility and how you invest in yourself and what you integrate in your system, what you choose to be, your style, your your motor, your passion. Yeah, yeah. What I can say is that at the beginning, you don't know anything, anything about acting or anything about the business. Uh, which we have to remember that this is a business. We artists all the time are like thrown by the art part of it. And we forget that this is like a big machine okay. that we have to, to be careful because we can be lost in the between and it can hurt us at some point if we are not ready. What I was like, one of my agents that recently, unfortunately passed away, when when I got to Hollywood, he was my first agent and he told me, Mariela, in this business, you have to have a combination of especially talent and persistence. You have to have both and the work ethic, but you have to also have ambition. You have to be positive. Mm -hmm. You have to fight with everything you have and you have to be very curious and if you have the combination of all these things and not let yourself down talent is that that small thing that you have to have it and around you have to have all other these other things that will support that talent because talent by itself is nothing so and he told me i saw this on you so just keep going and keep going with these things but you have to try everything because you're new here and you have to try everything to understand what you what you really want in this career in Hollywood and mm-hmm. I did I tried all the studios the, all the acting studios 
I tried all the auditions that they sent me for everything. I did everything, all the auditions possible to understand. And then with the years, you understand, no, wait, I wouldn't feel good defending that character. Sometimes you have to defend a character that you might not even like, but but then when you grow, you kind of understand like this character isn't just the right fit for me. Or is that where you were, where you're going with this? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, I disagree with the the character of the character or the way right. that character lives because I don't judge any character. I like you have as an artist and actor, mm -hmm. you have to find the ways why that person is in that position. What made that person do this? But there are certain things that I don't feel good doing just because I would prefer to have that time to defend mm -hmm. other type of character. It's about timing. You know, mm -hmm. it's not about, okay, now I'm going to focus on this, even though I don't, I, I would like to do other type of characters and that's it. And then let's see. No, it's because if I do that, probably I'm losing this one that I really like. Mm -hmm. These type of pro projects, these type of things that I really want to be in. And, you know, time passed by. And if you don't do these type of choices, not at the beginning, because we have to try everything at the beginning. Yes. But then if you don't do this type of choices, your career is all over the place and you are serving things that maybe don't make you like completely happy and plus uh, if you are not doing 100 what you really kind of love doing you, you can't be 100 real while you're doing that and that means that your output your your product at the end won't reflect 100 what your potential of course that is always very very difficult kind of that you have a product that reflects 100 where you're actually coming from and what your potential you know is but at least it should be as close as possible to what your core kind of demands and does right the closer it is to that and the more it matches your level of skills and then talent the better the performance and the output is going to be yeah. you like where you are exactly remember when we used to do like five six self tapes a week Yes. And I was going crazy. I, and yeah. I really commit to each character. And every time I feel like yeah. I was betraying the other one, right. but I was trying to go away from this one and go to the next one in the best way possible. At some point, I felt overwhelmed because it was mm -hmm. too much. Like, mm -hmm. too many, like, you didn't dedicate as much mm -hmm. as maybe one of those characters needed. And I really wanted to, do, like, to fight for it. Give a chance to another project or character that was just for the sake of work you know i think i think you're pointing out something very precious also for a lot of starters out there who are doing the self-tape game and casting call game and are all over the place all over the you know during the day which of course is beautiful to create that substantial mass of experience but also sometimes not taking everything and, and choosing a bit more wisely where you want to invest your energy in where it's probably better to have like three characters that you kind of perform at your maximum level instead of five characters that you're all performing sort of a, an acceptable level. I mean, I remember those times very well and you did very good on, on each and every occasion. It was just a matter of if the writing was strong enough or if the character was actually sharp enough and, and carved out enough out of the script. Sometimes it was a stronger character and a better background story. Sometimes it was kind of a shaky story. And that's where kind of the lack of output came from. But I think initially it is important to kind of, you know, hit at that door. And I want to kind of take the occasion to rewind time a little bit because Now we are talking already at a very high stratified level for, you know, whether to choose and what to do. Like, let's get it back a little bit to the origin. So you 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 did a very courageous move from, from Cuba to Milan, then another very courageous move from Milan to New York. And then you said, you know what, let's get to the Mecca. Let's get to the center where this whole thing is actually happening, where it's where it's where it's been created. And then you you moved to LA. And how was the initial time there? It was great. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It was great, um, especially because I I, I was coming from a place that the market is not that big. Mm -hmm. The industry is not that big in Italy. It was a lot of opportunity. It was a matter of like, oh my gosh, what can I do? Like, yes. where, where to go? It's like you can lose yourself in too many things. Then the weather is amazing in LA. <laughs> <laughs> I was studying in New York. I went that helps, to definitely it helps. Yeah, I went to the actor studio in Terry Schreiber in New York and they, they didn't want me to to go to LA. They were like, they have like their rivals, New York and yeah. LA. They are like, yeah. like you know, thing. it wasn't this big winter in 2015 in, in New York. And I was like, for as much as I love this, 
I am a tropical animal. I cannot be <laughs> January, February in New York. So I just yeah. try LA for, I, I told my husband, I'm going to go there for a week to see how actually is Los Angeles. Um, the city is not talking about building an architecture. Yeah. It's not like Europe, of course, but the landscapes and whatever you can do outdoor is so nice. You can do so many different things. So I was there by myself for a week and I already had an accent coach that we, we knew each other for a year and mm -hmm. we used to uh, do um, classes on, on Skype online. Mm -hmm. Zoom didn't exist. Uh, so I met him in person for the first time and he also was part of the actor studio that I started to go there to in LA. He pointed me my managers and, mm -hmm. and I went to a meeting with my managers and then I auditioned for them and they told me, okay, we want to sign you, but you have to leave here. Mm -hmm. So I talked to my husband. I was like, okay, I, I think it's not going to be New York. It's going to be LA. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people can, just by superficially listening to your story, might deduct, well, there was a lot of luck involved in her life. No. <laughs> and, but if you, if you really listen to it, to me, it's the preparation meets the occasion. There is an opportunity because you were prepared before that actually happened and so yeah. you could actually give exactly what they needed in that very moment also because if you don't have a work ethic a good work ethic and you you don't show the people around you that you really this is your life this is what you do they never gonna recommend you for another person right they're never gonna put their name in the middle and say like right, as my right. coach i'm not gonna risk person. i'm not gonna put my hand in, in the fire for this yeah, person no one does that especially in hollywood and mm -hmm. if they do is because they believe in you and then they saw in you that you really commit mm -hmm. to like it's hard working behind everything and talking about like opportunities to to jump to another level or, mm -hmm. or to go in a different directions. We all have that in life. And right. probably if I didn't hear my, my, that first person from my dancing um, company, I wouldn't do the rest, but you have to trust your instincts as well. And, and try to understand on these opportunities, which one is the one that you want to go for it. For me, it worked a lot by instinct. Something was there that I was like, I want to give it a try, even though if I don't do it then. And I did, and then it worked somehow. Then the rest is part of the work that you put on it. I mean, you were already kind of used to from, from New York, but like to jump in in all these auditions and traveling all over the place. And how, how was like the, the mood and the, the climate back then in, in the beginning? And how kind of, how did you kind of maneuver through that initial period in LA? It was hard to understand and the way how people, the culture, you know? Mm -hmm. So many things that I had to understand about banking about mm -hmm. how to lease a house how absolutely how to lease a car how to drive in a big city like that that was hard because on top of all the things that you're learning you are also starting to act in a language that is not yours it's kind of more working than what an american sure uh, American. You have to do a little bit more because you have to catch up with the language. You have to catch up with the culture. You have to catch up with some, some things that are naturally for the people who are inhabiting that, that region, that place, but not for you. You have to understand what's the humor behind certain phrases. certain Exactly. Like, and not only like even for ask a coffee, I don't, I don't even drink coffee, but even for ask a coffee, like it's a lot of like conversation in Los Angeles. It's like, it's not a coffee. It's like, and how do you want it? And it's like, it become a conversation that you're like, I don't have time. <laughs> you know? give me the coffee <laughs> like i need to drive in the other side of the city understand traffic understand the schedules like where are the places the parking how is the parking and put the coins or where is the, are the columns sure. the coins so you had to make sure to kind of invest time and understand your craft and then you you had to invest in your talents you had to look out for the right workshops where to forge your talent even more there was a necessity of understanding infrastructurally what is going on with your life in this place where is your place here how long does it take how can you move and all these things so yeah, you, know, really don't, yeah mm -hmm. you really don't understand that on uh, like until the outside. You, going on vacation or going for a month is not the same right. because i was there and i'm telling you this you know why <laughs> um i went there for a week and then i stayed longer because i got my managers mm -hmm. for a month but I was like moving around in Uber. I had my appointments. Like I was there for a limited time and I enjoy everything, but I didn't 
thought about the life. Like, okay, the bank right. account, and then to lease a house, you, you lease like short term. So you don't have to think about it. The sure. car, how is the contract? Oh, you need a sponsor or you need someone that have a good credit or you need, what is that? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, having five auditions, like learning. <laughs> right. For me, it was great. It was because I started working right away. Like after a month, I started working and, and it was it was good at the beginning. But I was understanding all those things. And in the back of my head, I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I knew this before mm. so i could be free now and just my work so for me it was like all at the same time and somehow i managed to do everything but yeah i advise everyone I in my channel as, as well right. all the, the the younger generation that are starting now is like just go at least for a month or two or go to study there and experiment how is to live there and i did in new york that was totally different from LA. But again, you lease houses for the amount of time you're, be, you're gonna be there studying. You know, you have a car in New York, especially you move in subway. LA is like a, a different animal that you have to understand before you move. Talking about the acting craft, what did you learn in Cuba that was essential to your acting craft? What did you learn in, in Milan and New York? And what are you learning cur currently? What are you learning in LA? That's a very interesting question. In, in Cuba, I didn't act. I had some commercials, but I didn't act. But yes, I did with my body, body language. I danced. Mm, so absolutely. I think that was something that I had already. That expression. That I only had to incorporate my voice when I started acting and the movement as a natural person and not dancing. So I think Cuba taught me that, gave mm. me that and the work ethic to, to get through what I went through. I was about to learn in Italy. Right. So that's Cuba. Italy was like my first time on set, my first time on a stage. <laughs> nice. So it was like all those discovery in the language that I, okay, I didn't know that much the language, but what was easier for me because it was more similar to the Spanish. I think you should start this career in a language that you feel confident mm -hmm. so you can explore more mm -hmm. and being on a stage even though or in, in front of a camera even though it's in a smaller market gives you the, the, the foundation of what you're gonna see later because mm -hmm. if you start like if you're lucky enough to start in a big Hollywood production and it's sure. your first time right. you can burn that opportunity you can right. burn it they're gonna see you as an amateur Mm -hmm. The person that haven't been on set that what is this, what is that? And they, they mm -hmm. expect that you are um, professional right. and prepared. So again, if, even though it's a small market or anything, it's good to start from somewhere. It is a market. <laughs> it yeah, is a market. it's something. So it gives you the, the um, it teach you. In New York, uh, I started like to really act in English in school. A lot of improvisation. They have a lot of techniques that you have they to do. take yeah. but, but it's more like taking things from real life and and mm -hmm. you know it's not like a construction and you are acting now like it's action and you have to act no right. it's like part of your life that you go part of your behavior outside. exactly and that was very interesting because when i got to uh, los angeles i had the whole thing to just like i was ready you know i just needed like more to get confident with the english <laughs> <laughs> With the accent and everything. The universe provides you with all the lessons that you learn. So when the opportunity opens up that you can finally deploy all your arsenal that you kind of accumulated over time. And to me, this kind of feels exactly this way. A lot of young guns, you know, they jump in, they go to drama school, they want to play the big parts. But sometimes, like you said, you, you're playing your big part right from the start. You have your breakthrough casting for a pilot that is truly super important and you don't have that luggage that baggage that thicker skin that that experience that is necessary to kind of you know maneuver through the difficult times on set and really kind of capturing the essence of the, what the character is and then you might come across as an amateur or somebody who's not ready for that big jump and 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 kind of burns more time than it will actually save and so it is truly important to build up all that framework Exactly. Even me, like, of course, if you get a lead role, you have to go for it in any stage of your new career. Sure. But it's sure. scary because even me that I like, I, I rather don't sleep, but understand that character. Most of I get is like auditions for lead roles. Every time I get one, even now, after 10 years, I'm nervous because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, can I carry the whole thing? You have to be honest with yourself and know uh, at what level in your craft you are. Speaking of work ethic, 
your work ethic is is you know it, it goes through the roof and you're managing very successfully also other projects in your life producing writing acting you get your own youtube channel how do you keep track how can you manage to do all those things in such an excellent way it's very difficult and i'm gonna show you i have this <laughs> It is the secret. Don't tell anyone. It's called Philo Facts, right? I have to schedule everything. It's not easy. Like doing many things at the same time, it can lead you to nothing mm -hmm. or it can lead you to so, so many things. I'm very curious. I really want to do many things and that's why I don't stop doing one. Right. So I'm like, okay, YouTube, okay, production. I have this idea. I have to write it. I, I'm in constant action. This can be bad. I'm always following my schedule, even if there is no money involved, even if I don't see results right away. Right. Most of them are long time, long term projects, you know, yeah. because I see, some, I feel something, and then I start to develop that, and then at some point, everything has a why. Do you always have that, or was there something that kind of grew with over time? Because you're talking about intuition a lot and instincts and how to trust them. Is there something like deep inside of you that, that always had this, let's optimize time at, at a very high level? Let's say that uh, even living in Cuba, I wasn't like a regular one, like a person living in Cuba, because usually in Cuba, you don't have much to do. Mm -hmm. But I was always busy doing mm -hmm. something. I was always, because I, I get bored so fast. Mm -hmm. And being at home sitting, like just watching TV, I cannot do that. So mm -hmm. I was like always look, looking for something to do that leads me to something else, mm -hmm. um, even there. And now I think, what did I do? Because, it was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, but and now that I'm outside, since I didn't have so many opportunities in my country for 19 years, I think that it's the hunger that I missed so much before. Mm -hmm. That leads me today to be hungry to like just create and create and create. And I, I need to do this. I want to do this, you know, and uh, I want to do everything. I don't have only one passion. I have so many passions. Right. So, but of course, my main thing is acting. What is your first approach when you're when you're reading the lines? How do you get in tune with that imagined life? Well, I read it like four or five times <laughs> to really understand uh, mm -hmm. what is happening. Mm -hmm. to start imagining the world. It's not the same reading a book mm -hmm. than reading a scene from a piece of paper. And, you know, not all the time they tell you the type of project that it is. So it's true. you can read that as a comedy, as a drama, horror, whatever. But if you don't know what type of project it is, you're never going to be right for that role. My first question, if I don't have that information, is like, what is this project? Like, what genre is this project? So I know how to play it. And then I dive in when I, once I read it like four or five times and I imagine whatever the world is, I just go and, and write a background for the character. And I create the life of that character that would be, make me believe that I'm that character at, at the moment of the audition. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm just reading lines and mm -hmm. I feel fake. So even though I don't have time, if I don't have time, I have like, let's say they send it to me tonight for tomorrow. Right. For tomorrow. I, as I said, you know, I rather don't sleep, but it doesn't have to be like a 15 pages background. And I learned with the years how to be faster. And many of them have similar backgrounds. <laughs> 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 so you kind of have like, I wonder. A, you, know, you kind of have something and you just yeah. feel the, the, the empty holes. Um, so true. you at yeah. least write like a piece of, paragraph or something right. important things that makes you like tricks you on those mm -hmm. moments in the scene and makes you have those decisions because we all have want something in a scene we have right. a goal why we want that and uh, how we get there is the thing but why we are saying it in that way and not in another way is because the character has certain background mm -hmm. certain purpose so yeah i need to write that to really feel empathy for the character otherwise i'm like just lines if i can give another advice to like Perfect. actors out there like when you get um sites and mm -hmm. you start memorizing the memorizing process is very it can be frustrating especially if you have 
like many things happening in your life. Right. Um, I have an app. Cool. And I just record myself and the other characters and I just like keep repeating. Oh, absolutely. I mean, learning goes through, uh, goes through hearing, not reading. I mean, learning really happens while you're hearing the things, the notions and how it emotionally kind of touches you. And that's where the, the, the emotional anchor gets built around the phrase, around the word, around something significant in the text. That's how you can relate to that. It's not by seeing it, by hearing it. So that's, that's a pretty smart move. James yeah. Dean is allegedly one who was um, obsessed about recording himself over and over and listening over and over to, again to his recordings, like to really get to that resonance, to that frequency where he would actually like what he was hearing and believing it. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you don't hear it or you, if you don't say it out loud, then you cannot say it in your head all the time because no. then when you say it, it would, you're going to be weird. Or yeah. <laughs> so you have to say it out loud, but not having a response and not listening, really listening what the other character is saying. Maybe you don't really realize some of the reactions of that character. So really hearing to this other character, even if I if I record it myself. Yeah, really I'm like, listening to him. Oh, yeah. wait, maybe it's this. Mm -hmm. I'm getting it now. Because if you read it, maybe they also the intonation it can change. And yeah. even though you, you record it like plain, you're right. hearing for the first time, you're like, oh, okay. And sometimes it's crazy how the intonation uh, gives you sort of another of an artistic direction because you realize, oh, I sound jealous. Why do I sound jealous? Oh, maybe I'm jealous of oh, of this and that. And then it kind of flips the way you're looking, the, the the view that you do that you previously had on the scene kind of flips and turns. It's like, no, maybe I'm jealous. This is even more fun. And then you go for that. So listening exactly. really to to how it comes out. And really not judging in the beginning and really letting it out and then of, of, of really having that, that honesty that because maybe we, we are so enamored with our plan. I mean, like you're saying, like I'm writing a background story. I don't care how late it is. I'm getting down with my business. And then we're doing a lot of study and research and secondary literature if we have a little bit more time for the auditions or preparing the role and set. And then, of course, when you invest a lot of time, you get enamored with the work that you have, you know, put in that that character and so you want to defend that work and sometimes it is you're very jealous easier. of your work you're jealous of the work no 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 he's not gonna do that because you know it's it's written here but sometimes you realize it's even more powerful to kind of change the paradigm and say you know i did this work it's it's good that i've done this work it helped me in, in any case to build up my focus my concentration is there but i have to admit sure. this is maybe an even better idea yeah to be secured also yeah to be secure absolutely and I think Hollywood is such a great metaphor for that continuous, never-ending learning process. Yeah, exactly. You have a lot of things to learn every day. <laughs> what's, your, what's your next move? What, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to learn in, the, in those coming years in, in, in the City of Angels? I started producing, mm -hmm. as you know. Um, and I'm what here in it? Italy opening my production company now that would bridge with the United States. So I would be very uh, busy with that. I have uh, an American partner, an Italian partner, and we want, we want to bridge projects from here to there and from there to here. Beautiful. So it's gonna be like a lot of meetings and a lot of like studying and reading as I do every day, <laughs> um, scripts. And, um, and yeah, that's my next, the preparation to start doing that. Like mm -hmm. now it's like building that foundation Mm -hmm. uh, for this next big thing mm -hmm. so when we actually start to looking for fi um, financing and and uh, to attach cast and everything we are ready with all the paperwork and everything so it's going to be Very probably cool. at the beginning yeah. of the year we're going to start like really start now is the preparation of it so now i'm going to go back there and keep the prep for the first months of the year but I'm going to launch this production company. It sounds to me like you're all always repeating the cycle, like learning first this. Okay, now I got this secure. Let's move to the next stage, to the better stage. There I learned this and I do a lot of work on myself. Okay, I got this. Now this is secure. Let's move up to the next stage. And now it's it, this is an ongoing process with you. Yeah, I have to keep, as I said before, I have to keep going and, and look and search for things that fulfill me.
And as an artist, life and the career leads you to these other steps in the industry mm-hmm. that you realize, oh, wait, but I, I want to be more, I want to be part more of, about not only the creative part of the actor that is a single piece, but I want to be part of the bigger thing. Of the entire. I want to create it from scratch, and I write as well. So it's like, okay, I want to see my my baby grow up from me. That I'm looking for people to be part of this and putting people together and and building um, a product that then I'm gonna be part of from the beginning. Not only contribute as the actor. That's what happened with production for me and for writing is because I every time I have an idea, I write it. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> Just um, to to finish this up, because I I think we kind of touched upon some very, very important uh, topics and we kind of highlighted very important things that instruments and and also mindsets that you need to kind of make it in this beautiful and crazy, wacky industry. You know, like in every every field of profession where the stakes are high, where there are a lot of competitors, um, where there's a lot of competition going on and, and a lot of money involved. There is sometimes there there are some collisions. Sometimes you know there are some negative experiences. Sometimes people kind of overstep the line and 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 kind of you know sometimes the boundaries and especially for a woman like in such a crazy big town and where it's all about sometimes appearances as well. How do you protect yourself? Where do you get the strength from from having that courage and also getting that negative feedback sometimes or having those setbacks, but coming home and saying, you know what, I can leave this at the door. Of course, we take something in because we it's important to us. It's our passion. But how can we protect ourselves like and not getting hurt too much and not losing the passion? In my the- case? Yeah, my husband. Yeah, <laughs> that is my anchor. Like having a strong partner, a great environment, your anchor. Um, sure. Yeah, you have to have like a private life, very I think settled. Mm-hmm. In my case, in my opinion, this is my experience. Everyone is different, but sure. <clears throat> it helped me a lot to have something at home that make me happy, and it doesn't have to like my work is not the only thing that make me happy. So if something is not happening or not working in my work, I always have this part of my life that fulfills me myself, you know? I think that protects me a lot. And like also, like we said before, you were always focused on, on building yourself up, not so much your career or yeah. what, whatever strange missions, uh, yourself up and learning and, 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 and being happy in that process. Yeah, I'm a forever happy student. Me too. <laughs> It was such a pleasure. That was a beautiful finishing line for this very inspirational and I think also packed like this new episode we recorded today was packed with with useful information, also very inspirational kind of moments that always show us like if you really believe in your product, if you really constantly, persistently work with a lot of patience on on, on what your passion is and what you're good at, success will will come in, will follow automatically and you don't have to distort yourself so much just that that piece that is necessary to kind of fill up that imagined life that other container you can keep a lot of stuff for yourself you don't have to sell out your essence quite the contrary the more you keep the essence the more interesting you become and there is so much fortitude and so much grace in your words and your story that you, that you told us today and i think it was very important also for the for the newbies out there but also for maybe seasoned actors who kind of lost their path a little bit or are going through a darker or drier period of their professional life it's important to kind of always kind of come back to yourself like what a privilege this is i can play i can demonstrate i can display emotions i can entertain and inspire people at the end yeah. of the day and just to finish with something is like now that you talk about success it's like success everyone defines success with one thing and success Mm -hmm. is so many things so everyone has to find the definition of success for themselves so what is success for you for yourself especially not other people for yourself and then when that's the success for you then go for that type of success that you want to have and then you're going to be happy. Otherwise, if you're going to like for the stigma of like, okay, yeah. success is being there in that point or whatever, you're never going to be happy. Yeah. And not getting carried away by other agendas. This is 
truly like a great finishing word i think what you just said like your success is not defined by someone else it's defined by yourself and like especially a city like la that has so many different agendas and so many different interests and currents going on it's easy to get carried away by those but but focusing on your product and what truly makes you happy and how you want to define yourself that is always a great compass also to navigate through these waters exactly See you next time with the next episode of Talks on Acting. Thank you so much, Mariela, for coming to the show today. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye bye.